Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another exciting morning of chemistry with your host, Dr. White. And today's going to be our lab. And the lab uh, will be doing what Lab Z, but I still want to go over certain things from the syllabus. And then I want to do some safety things. I'll go over the safety video, or it's not video, safety lab. And then I'll go over some basics of beyond Lab Z. And I'll stick around at the end. If you have any questions, ask. By the way, is the quick clicking still gone? Is thumbs up means is thumbs up if you hear clicking. Yay. Thank you. All right. Good. I don't know. I, I still don't know what's going on. All right. Let's do. Uh, Everybody see the syllabus on the screen now? Thumbs up, people. Thank you. All right. Now, for the lab this semester, you'll be doing labs. And one important thing about doing labs is you're not supposed to get a lab from somebody else or online and use those answers because that's considered uh, cheating. And if a student is found in violation of any provisions of the Code of Academic Conduct, which I have a link earlier in the syllabus, so you can read it, you should, uh, you'll receive the appropriate punishment determined. Usually you get a zero for the lab. And if you do it more than once and I catch you, a letter goes to the Dean of Students and to my Dean, Dean of Math and Science, which gets put in your file, which is not a good thing. Labs are easy. If you need help with labs, always feel free to ask me. And, but you shouldn't just copy from someone else. All right, let's talk about it. The lab is worth 21% of your final grade. You'll have 14 labs. Each lab is worth 10 points. Now, lab reports are due in the next lab session after session for the lab report being handed in. So in other words, today's lab, safety lab, is due next Friday. Now, how do you do hand in a lab? What you need to do is print out the lab. Now, relax. If you don't have a printer, you can just write out the questions and replace for the data on a piece of paper. Then scan it and make a PDF file. Relax. If you don't have a scanner, but I think all of you have access to a cell phone, you can take pictures of that. Don't upload the JPEG pictures. I have on Blackboard, if you look in the upper left-hand corner, you'll see a place about a couple right below course information, how to make PDF files. And I have one, a Word or a PDF document, how to do that. And also, I have a link and also a description, actually, uh, another document, how to use a uh, cam scam, uh, scanner, which is a free app for your cell phone, both um, Apple and uh, Google uh, phones, Android, that's the word I was searching for. Work with it last summer, it worked well for my students this fall, last fall. and you'll upload the PDF of your answers for the lab to the assignment area of Blackboard. And uh, I posted it yesterday. Let's go there. All right, real quick, thumbs up, people. Can you see Blackboard? And thank you. All right, a couple of things. First of all, if you look over here, it says assignments, and over here, PDF instructions. If I click on that, you see instructions for submitting my tests and labs, and also the final. And here's a 
uh, file that I made, Word and PDF, how to use Cam Scammer. Don't pay any money, use the free version. You don't have to. Now, if we go, before we go to assignments, let me do something. What I'm gonna do is switch to what your view would be. All right, see over here, it says assignments. If I click on that, oh look, lab one, safety lab. And here you can download it as a Word document or PDF, uh, even though they do have a lot, uh, Blackboard now has a way of taking a doc and loading it, downloading it as a PDF or other formats. I still like to do both for you. Now, if you click on labs, the blue number one lab safety, you'll see when it's due next Friday by 12 p.m. The end of the lab is the way I do it. Here's your downloads. And here is how you can attach a file, your PDF file that you're handing in. And then you go down here and hit submit. All right, if the clicking gets real bad, uh, let me know and I'll switch to the other camera. Let's do something real quick. Give me a thumbs up if you want me to switch to the other camera. Uh, I see the majority of you can live with this for a while. If it gets real bad, someone either text, uh, say, um, tell me in chat or let me know. All right, it's coming and going. That's what makes it frustrating. All right, so anyways, that's how you hand in a lab, upload it, and I assume most of you, unless you're using cloud service of some sort, have it on your local computer or whatever you're using, tablet. And you can upload it and that's how you submit a lab. Let me do this. All right, so that's how you upload a lab. Now, for today's lab, I'm supposed to do some safety stuff. And where did I just hide my goggles? All right, ah, over here. All right, if we were working in the lab, I'd show you a video. And afterward, I go through a list of the safety things. Guess what? You're not gonna be working physically with chemicals. So I'm not gonna show you the safety video. But I do want to mention a few things. First of all, working in the lab, you should always wear goggles. If we're at COD, you're required to buy your own. You can get them at the bookstore, low uh, Menards and uh, Home Depot, and not glasses, but goggles, and they protect your eyes. This is probably the most important piece of safety equipment you can use in a lab. Why? Well, it protects your eyes. You can't replace your eyes if they're damaged. If chemicals get in there or some glass that gets in there somehow. How would that happen? Well, a sad story I need to tell you. And that is when I was in grad school across the hall, there was another research crew and there was a grad student there I knew, I was friendly with, and he was doing a very dangerous reaction, but he had done it 50 times before. I did very dangerous reactions that I did a number of times. Well, this one time he was in a hurry to get to a seminar and he rushed it and made a slight mistake and it blew up in his face. I was one of the first people in there to help carry him out and uh, the lab. And luckily he had the safety goggles on. And I remember waiting in the emergency room with his wife and the surgeon came out and said, to her, and I was sitting right next to her, I heard it, your husband's very lucky. If he hadn't been wearing his safety glass goggles, I'd be telling you right now he's blind. He had from the glass that blew up and he had a big piece of glass uh, equipment he was working in, he had on his face about 200 stitches from the glass. 
and it took about three hours to pick out all the bats. Luckily, the explosion was so forceful that there were little pieces, so he had two stitches in life. And he, when he healed, you really couldn't see anything. He was very lucky. But that taught me an important lesson for Dr. White personally. The rest of my life, whenever I'm in a lab around chemicals, I don't play games. I always have safety goggles on. Now, you're not going to be handling anything at home except your computer, and you don't have to wear goggles then. But it's something I want to teach you. Now, when you're working in a lab, and I'll show you this in a second, you should have proper, wear proper things, clothing. And the other thing is in a lab, which you're not going to be, but I still want to go over it, I'm required to, you should never bring food or anything to drink in a lab. Why? Because they can get contaminated with the chemicals. If you bring a cup or a water bottle, chemicals can get in there, you drink it, and they could be hazardous to your health. So you should never eat or drink in a lab. Now, important thing, if there's a fire, if you're using a Bunsen burner, which unfortunately we're not going to do it, you're not going to do it hands on, but you turn off the flame, let me know, the instructor, and get out of the room. And uh, one of the nice things that happened to me is because I was a senior manager and it happened at two companies, and I went to the chemical plants to A, help start up new reactions, and B, go there when they have problems to solve those problems. Uh, more than once, I got a call at night from the VP of production say, could you be on a plane tomorrow morning to this plant? We're having problems. You have to solve it. Well, because of that, I got special training with fire extinguishers. Uh, one, uh, one of the training exercises was they had a pan of metal pan about this high, about four by eight feet like a sheet of plywood, and it was filled with gasoline. They set it on fire, and each person in the class got a fire extinguisher and had to put it out more than once. And that taught you not to be afraid to use it in a fire. The other part, I remember that training, there was more to it. About seven feet off the ground, they had a pipe that had holes in it, and then it was cooked up to a drum with a pump, hand pump, and gasoline was coming out of those holes, and they set that on fire. And you had to learn how to put out a fire above your head. And that taught you. Now, when you're using a fire extinguisher, which I hope you never have to, but most people make a mistake of shooting it at the top of the fire. No. If the fire is coming up like this, you shoot it always at the base of the fire. And I have one in my kitchen. I was thinking about this yesterday when I taught this lab to the other section that maybe I should buy one for upstairs too. Not that I do anything flammable upstairs, but maybe that'd be a good idea. Now, when you're dealing with, in the lab, if you ever have a small little fire, you know, like in a beaker, and this is good advice for at home too, if I ever am cooking anything, frying anything in a frying pan, I have a big lid that I can just put right over the frying pan. And that's good in a lab. If you cover it with a piece of glass like this, it will stop a fire if it's a small fire. Now, another thing that you would learn from the video is when you're using any glassware, and I do this whenever I'm uh, putting something in the microwave, is you look at it, make sure there are no cracks and no little stars. Because if you heat up something that's made of glass, with a crack or a star, it can just crack totally, it almost explode, and you don't want that to happen. All right. All right, I hear the clicking is really loud. Switching to the non clicking camera. I'm still here, but just I'm white. I am white. Oh, Dr. White made a funny, a real bad funny. But, anyways, uh, thank you for letting me know. Now, what I'd like to do is go through the safety lab, things I want to talk about to you and teach you some things.
thumbs up people if you see lab number one say thank you and all right now this you can download you don't need it today but you can download it uh from blackboard from lab number one in the assignments area and they have taught you can watch these videos if you'd like to but when you're in the lab which we're not but if we were I would be checking. I take safety very seriously, especially after all that I told you that experience I had, or I should say my colleague had. First of all, you should always wear long pants or a skirt that comes down to your ankles and a shirt that covers your torso. And this being spring term, I'd be reminding you when it gets warmer, no open midriff, and you should have closed shoes. You should wear goggles not glasses, safety glasses. Uh, COD provides gloves. Now the apron, this is one we had last semester. We tried having students do a home kit and it didn't work out that well. But anyways, uh, that's why I forgot to cut this out. You should always tie back long hair, long hair there. Hair. Well, I don't have that much left, but hair is very flammable. And when I was in grad school at Michigan State, I was teaching a lab. And even though the student had her hair pulled back, she leaned forward and part of her ponytail got in a Bunsen burner. She was very lucky because I happened to be standing right next to her talking to someone else when that happened. I could see it out of the corner of my eye. I turned around, pulled her back from the Bunsen burner, went like this on her hair, and she only lost about that much of her ponytail. She was very lucky. But always, when you're working in a lab, make sure if you have long hair, you pull it back. Don't tell anybody, but when I was in college, I had a ponytail too. My hair was down to about here. Shh, don't tell anybody. True story. All right, and this is this actual what you see here is posted in each lab at COD, and they actually come by the safety officer during the labs and does a quick inspection. She does, Patricia. She's done it in my lab. She's done it in others. Are you enforcing the laws? Meaning me, and I do. And here's some videos if you want you to learn about safety, but uh, you don't really have to because we're not actually working at home with chemicals. You'll be doing a virtual labs. Now, important things just to learn in general is if you ever get any chemicals on your skin or eyes, the most effective way to safety thing is to wash it for a minimum of 15 minutes and then seek medical attention and use cold water, not hot water. Now, here's the important thing. Uh, in the lab, if you break something glass, I clean it up. I see someone. And the answer is yes, that is, that Patricia. And she does a good job. Uh, and she's, like I said, she came in to safety inspections more than once in my lab and thanked me for following the rules which I do. And uh, Jazz, yes, she is. Let's move on. Uh, if you ever do break glass, you know, break anything glass at home, always use a broom and a dustpan. If you don't have that, one of the things I've found is if you take a couple pieces of cardboard or even a credit card, and you can go like this onto a piece of paper or cardboard and then safely never try and pick it up with your hands because you'll probably cut yourself. Now, all chemicals that are used in any product and all chemicals that are sold in the United States have what's known as an MSDS sheet and also sometimes called SDS sheet. And you have a label, chemicals sometimes have, usually always have labels, 
with these different symbols. And if you're driving around, sometimes you may see a truck with these placards with the symbol on it. Like if they have something flammable, you'll see this. Now, the MSDS, which is Material Safety Data Sheet, some people just call it SDS, I call it MSDS, I'm old school, gives you a lot of information about the chemical that it's written for. And like I said, every chemical that's made in the United States or used in the United States has an MSDS. Now with the internet for many years, any chemical that's being sold in the United States or on a product you buy, you can find it easily, and I'll show you in a second, on the internet. And I use Google, that's my favorite search engine. And one of the important things is hazards. And you see the NFPA scale were zero for these different things, like red is a fire hazard, and these are different hazards. And it warns you what are things that are dangerous or not. Oh, here it is. Blue is health hazard. Red is fire hazard. Yellow is reactivity. White is a special hazard. I guess I am, no. But anyways, seriously. And here's some videos if you'd like to. But what I would like to show you is a real MSDS sheet. Let me get out a blackboard here. Let me. All right, does everybody see the, um, thank you. I really appreciate all of you who are my thumbs up people. There's a bug in Zoom where I think you're seeing it and you don't. I learned that last summer. All right, now with Google, and by the way, I'm old school. I don't like using Google as a verb. I use it always as a noun, rarely a verb. But let's put one chemical in and I'll explain. Tubutoxyethanol and then after name of a chemical, if you put an MSDS, hit enter, you'll see safety data sheet. And you'll see a number of companies that have them. And usually I try and pick one that's from a reputable company. I know Fisher, I know Sigma Aldridge. Sigma Aldridge is probably the finest company in the world to buy small quantities of any chemical organic for sure. I've been using them for decades. They're located in Milwaukee. Let's go to this. Uh, now, oh, internet's slow today. They're slow today, which is unusual. Let's go to Fisher. And Fisher, here's the safety data sheet. Sometimes you'll call it material safety data sheet. Over the years, they've changed this slightly. Usually part one is always identification. Here's the name, here's others, tubutoxyethanol. And you see some hazards here. This is pretty hazardous stuff. It's flammable, it's oral, meaning if you take it in, it's dangerous to your skin. It's toxic if you inhale it. And if I'm going to scroll down and you can see some different precautions. They tell you how, what are first aid measures you should do. If you're a firefighter, how do you get uh, take care of a fire? If you release it, who should you contact and what you do? How should you handle it? Exposure. Now, this is an important part. Now, TWA is time-weighted average. And notice here, these are usually 
LD50s, as they say, or the maximum. When you see PPM in a very low number, that means it's pretty hazardous. OSHA is the uh, Occupational Safety Hazard Act. Uh, OSHA uh, is the agency that regulates hazards in the workplace and sets rules. And if we move down further, some physical properties and stability and 11 is an important thing. How tox uh, toxic is it? Now they've changed this. I've seen older ones where it is known to be very mutagenic for this chemical. And that's sometimes why you go to more than one and uh, you gotta be careful. But if we look down here, uh, it's pretty toxic stuff to freshwater fish and everything else. And this is an MSDS sheet. You can find it for anything you're looking for. Now, why did I pick this chemical, 2-butoxyethanol? Well, time for Dr. White's story. Oh, we got plenty of time. Uh, how many of you remember or heard about the uh, Deepwater Horizon oil spill about 2010? And that's when in the Gulf of Mexico, Standard Oil had a oil rig uh, run by another company, I can't remember their name, and they had a major accident and they couldn't stop the oil from coming from this undersea oil well. And millions and millions of gallons of oil were released to the Gulf of Mexico. It was one of the most horrific environmental accidents in the history. And being an organic chemist, I was interested. The first thing I did is I saw that the government figures and what I knew would come out of an oil fill were way off. It was much more oil dumped than they claimed at first. Next. I heard on the news reports that to disperse the oil from because it was floating on the top of the water, they were using a chemical dispersion called um, Norexit, uh, I think it was Norexit uh, 49 something. Uh, and they're putting millions of gallons of this stuff to uh, disperse, I think it was hundreds of millions of gallons, whatever, a lot of it, a couple million gallons of stuff into the Gulf of Mexico. And being an organic chemist, I wonder, What's that stuff? And this product was made, is made by a company called Nalco that's located in Naperville. It's since been bought out years ago by a French company, but I think it's called the Nalco division. So I looked up the MSDS sheet for that product and I found it. And then I looked at different chemicals because then I, what I showed you was a pure chemical, but if it's a mixture of things, they listed different chemicals. And the one that was the main chemical was tubitoxyethanol. And I looked up the MSDS for that. Why did they put that? It's gonna kill off marine life in the Gulf of Mexico. Any workers there trying to get up, clean up that oil are gonna be affected very badly. So what did I do? I was able to get to this uh, second in command in terms of the cleanup with the government I think that was the Coast Guard, but I'm not sure. And they had me talk to their chemist, who was an academic chemist, not that there's anything wrong with academic chemists, but they don't have, a lot of them don't have experience in the real world. And this guy was one of them. And I saw I was wasting my time because it was quite hazardous. You should stop. And being raised by my parents, being a socially responsible person, who's also an organic chemist, I went ahead and I hope I, I'm sure I wasn't the only one, but I did myself because I've been trained as a manager. When there's a problem, don't walk away from it if you know how to solve it. And I called up MSNBC, CBS, and um, CNN. I also contacted the New York Times and Washington Post. Tribune has been Republican, so I stayed away from them. And I'm sure I wasn't the only chemist because within about 24 hours, the news organization started questioning that and it took a couple of days before the EPA stopped it, which is sad. Why is it sad? 
because a couple of years ago, I saw an article on a line about follow-up, what happened to the workers who were involved in the cleanup, like on the beach, the birds and all that. And they're getting, they got sick when it happened. And now years later, they were still sick. And I contacted that author, let him know what I had done. We were talking, said, there's someone else who helped write this article for me, you should talk to. And it turned out the other author of that article was someone who was actually on a cleanup boat who got sick from that chemical dispersion. So it pays to read MSDS sheets. And now you know how to do that. Uh, a couple of things I just want to go over. Uh, you should never eat in the lab. Uh, when you're finished, you should dilute uh, things like that. You should always put chemicals back. After dealing with chemicals, you should always wash your hands. Uh, oh, quick thing. You know how you can tell a chemist in the restroom? A chemist always washes their hands before and after they use the restroom, especially when you're, because you don't want to get chemicals where you never want to get chemicals. I worked at one company and this, they made very hazardous chemicals that were very bad skin irritant, but they were used for things that were safe after we made other products with them. And this one worker didn't wash his hands before he used the restroom and got chemicals where he never wanted to get chemicals. It was quite painful. And even after he cleared up, it was still painful because everybody kept on reminding him what a fool he was an idiot and he learned his lesson unfortunately so anyways that's always a safety thing all right now can everybody see safety lab can be 12 11 questions thank you for today's lab what you need to do is answer these questions now here I have what's the most important safety equipment you'll use in your chem uh, kit. I forgot to change this. Change that. Think of that. What would you use in the lab? And why is it so important? Then the other questions, how to, you should answer these. And we see chem kit, just put in a lab. And then I have question four, how do you find the MS? Oh, I misnabled it because I, this should be five, but anyways. And here for seven, I have some chemicals for you to look up MSDS sheets and find things. If you find more than one MSDS sheet, sometimes the numbers will be slightly different. They'll be similar. Uh, chemical companies make up their own and there's no real standard. I've written MSDS sheets for molecules that I've discovered and were sold. And I try and go with the best information. And here, that's number eight. And that's the lab you have to do. And what you have to do is you don't have to print out the whole lab if you don't want to. You answer those questions, scan it, or use your phone to make a PDF file and upload that by next Friday noon to the assignment area for lab number one, and that's it. All right, any questions first before I move on to lab beyond lab Z? I have a question. Oh. Um, if, can we just type in a Word document and change it to a PDF and send it to you? Yes, you can, or that's a great question. And uh, the only thing that it might be difficult is when you do tests and you gotta do formulas that takes a lot of time and it might be easier to write it. But on something like that, yep, that works for me. The reason why I say that is, is when you upload it to the assignment area in um, Blackboard, that keeps a record of who uploaded it, you, so you don't have to write your name on the top, you can just type it. Okay, thank you. That's a great question. I'm sure you just helped out a lot of other 
of your colleagues. All right, other questions? Going once, going twice. All right, let's move on to Beyond Lab Z. First of all, you should buy a license for that if you already have it from the bookstore. Because of a contract between the people who run the bookstore, follow it, and COD, all faculty are not allowed to tell students where to get things elsewhere. Otherwise, the school can get sued and the faculty member can get sued. And I don't need that in my life. Trust me, I don't. Uh, but luckily, the price of the license isn't that expensive. It's about $30. If you were working in a lab, doing a 1211 lab, you'd have to go out and get a copy of the book, lab book, and that would be about $40, $50, even an e-version. And then you'd also have to buy goggles, which is a couple of dollars. So if you're saving money by what we're doing, plus you don't have to spend the gas to come to the COD. What a deal. Now, it may take a while. I don't know how, why they set it up because I was given a free access code because faculty who teach get that. So it was sent to me by email. They don't do that. For some reason, I found out yesterday, you get the code sent to you, access code to log in by mail. Why did they do that? Don't know, <laughs> but they do. Yeah, but relax, you don't need it until next week. And if it's actually a week after next, because you'll have time still, so you got plenty of time. But you should do it now if you haven't bought it. Now, All right, everybody still see the old safety data sheet on the screen? Okay, good. Because now let's go to Beyond Lab Z. Now, you should register if you haven't. Once you get your key, register. I'm already registering, so I won't. And you'll log in. Let's try again. Oh, I know why. I used the wrong password. And you'll see this. Now, when you first time, you'll go to the download, and I'll tell you what you should download. I've already done that. When I first did this and came back the next time, I got confused because I see this and I see download. I've already done this. And they hide over here, connect. And Tell me if you, everybody see where the connect is on there? Okay. Now, open the link and you get to this. Now, for our lab, you have to download the chemistry, both higher ed and high school. And you also need the physical science, high school and middle school. It doesn't put that much on your computer, because it downloads stuff on your computer. Now, over here at the top, you see labs and activities. Now, activities, if we go to chemistry and we go to higher ed, you can see things like atomic theory, click on it. Can everybody see Thompson cathode ray tube experiment? All right, this opens up a PDF file. Now, the way they have this set up it's like a treasure hunt to find labs, the PDF files. Dr. White has made your life easier. Don't tell anybody I'm being nice. It'll ruin my image around here. Shh. But anyways, I will attach to each lab in the assignment area these PDF files. And I also have created for each lab my own lab because there are questions on there and some of their descriptions need improvement 
and I do that. Now let's go back to the labs. Let's have some fun. Uh, last summer we used another product called Labster and how can I say this politely? It was beyond awful. I had troubles doing the lab. If I have troubles, first of all, I'm a power user in a computer. And I got a PhD in chemistry. I shouldn't have any problems and I did. I wound up writing my own labs and just told students, take a look at it. And that cost the students $50. So see your hearty, because the department's saving $20 over last summer. And if you click on open, You'll see this window. Does everybody see now where it says mechanics density? Because if I hadn't changed screen, you wouldn't. Now, next week's lab is going to be density. And you'd click on this. It makes this funny little noise. And does everybody see the lab now in there with the graduated cylinders? Thank you. It's time to now next week. I'm going to teach you how to do this. But let's show you how neat they did a good job on this and if i want to get to water i'll click on this and see now i have water i only want to fill it half so i'll go like that is this cool or not now you know i'm a chemist because i'm having lots of fun if i click on full and they even have noise effects see over here the graduated cylinder is half full if i click on that Come on, I can see over here, and I'm trying to work with Lab Z. I've already talked to them about how to expand this and do this better. It's really hard to read, but I'll teach you how to do it next week, not now. But there's about 112 milliliters in there. Now, density I'll teach you is weight per unit volume. So if we pick something like, oh, nickel, we can put it on the balance. And you see the weight, is that cool? Now we wanna see how much displacement to know what the volume of the sphere is. Oops, I always forget, gotta move this over so I can drop it in. I'll put it over here and this I'm gonna, ah, come on, be nice. Sometimes, and there, <laughs> sometimes you gotta play with it. And then here it says drop. And if you notice the volume over here is now roughly 112. When I hit drop, it went down, it didn't float, but it's gone up to 132. I'll teach you how to do this next week. But see how nice the animation is. Now when you're done, they have a little valve that you can flush the waste away. And you go, it's flush. <laughs> is that cute? Now, if you have a liquid in there, say if we pick another one, like the alcohol, if I want to measure how much the weight of the alcohol, first of all, I'll do it half full. And I can put this beaker on here. Now, and I'll teach you this again next week. So that's why I'm going, if I hit chair, that's the way to zero to balance. Now I'll move this over. I can pick this up. And this sometimes gets funky. You got to align it just right. Two days later, there you go. And I know that I'll, that liquid weighed 87.54 grams. And if you want, you can take this and pour it back in there. And they've really done a great job on animations. Now, this is one lab. When you're through, you can hit exit. And I'll have certain ones you'll do next week. And I'll show you how to do this again. And I'm just showing you now. I'm going to exit this. Uh, it's not what I want. If 
All right, everybody see the Beyond Z Lab again? All right. It opens different screens and uh, Zoom gets confused. Now, open chemistry. This is before the density is in physical science. And I got to share, do this with Zoom. All right, everybody see titrations, calorimetry on the top? Ah, it tells me you should. That's why I do my thumbs up, people. Now do you see it? Oh, it's being. Now do you see it? Thank you. That happens because Zoom is telling me you should see it and you don't. I got to repeat it. Now, if we click on titrations, this is another lab you'll do at the end of the semester. All right. Everybody see the titration lab here with a burette, a balance. This is called a magnetic stir pH meter. Here's our storeroom. This is really cool. And if I want to take some HCl out of there and some sodium hydroxide, I can do that. I can return to the lab. Again, I'll show you this later on. I can take this out down here. By the way, this bell here is if you ever need help. And notice the little drawer here. I can take out a beaker. I can take out a second one, or I can put one there. And I'll use the third one. And I'll close the drawer. And I can take like the HCl and pour it in there. And I can take that, this is called burette, and it fills it up. I can take this. Dr. White's having a lot of fun, but you'll get to do this too on your own so you can have a lot of fun. And here we have pipettes. And let's put five milliliter pipette. I'm gonna move this over here. Move my empty, uh, nope, wrong beaker. This one over here. I should close this so you don't trip on it. Hold on. By the way, I practiced a lot with this lot in January. And in the density lab, I actually found a bug that I contacted Lab Z people on that they fixed because it wasn't giving the right answers. If I do this, notice I have five milliliters. I can go like this. I can put it in there. Now titration, I'll teach you later on how to do this, but let's use phenolphthalein indicator. Notice it's red and I'll turn on the hot the stirring. This is called magnetic stir. And then you have a little valve and you can, I didn't show you, but you can see where you start. And you have, a, you could put in a pH meter also. Something doesn't look right with the pH meter. And you can control how fast you put it in. You can go slow, super slow, or as we call it, shotgun it in. And you see how it changed color? And that's titration. Is that neat or not? And when you're done, you just go exit and it cleans up after itself, which is nice too. All right, and that's how you use Lab Z. Now, on yesterday's lab, a couple students asked, we'll work on a MacBook. And the answer is other students, I don't have a Mac computer or MacBook, I'm a PC person. 
My older sister is an app person, and we've been for a number of years, who's better, mine's better. We finally came to truce. Whoever likes what they like to use, use it, and we do. But the Mac, it works fine on there, and I think it works with Safari. Um, when I was just showing it, I use Firefox. That's my favorite uh, internet browser. And um, the only thing, I had one student who had a Chromebook that was, I think, older, and there was a problem with that. If you have that problem, check with the library real quick, and you should be able to, hopefully they still have some, uh, check out free for the semester computer to use a laptop. And so let's see, I've talked about what's the lab. I've talked about uh, what you have to hand in next week. We went through the safety lab. You just have to answer the questions. If you don't have a printer, all you have to do is put down your name on the sheet of paper, one and write your answer and two, three and four. I think there's true eight, but I misnumbered. I, when I was changing it, I forgot the number properly. Dr. White makes mistakes. I'm human. And um, either with a scanner or your smartphone, I've never met anybody who's got a dumb phone, but they call it that, your cell phone, make a PDF and it's due next Monday. And if you don't hand it in, you get zero points. If you hand it and do it right, you get 10 points. And I will have to say, the way I grade labs, you hand it in, do it pretty, make an effort at it, you'll get a good score. They're easy points because labs should be fun. Now, next week, beginning of the lab, I'll go through chapter two problem set questions. And that's the time where you can ask me, I'll do some of them. If you want me to do some, or if you have questions, do that. I haven't figured it out yet, but in the next week or two, part of the lab, maybe 20 minutes at the end, I'm going to have you go to breakout rooms in Zoom so you can get to meet your colleagues and I can go in there and I can get to know you better because that's one of the bad things about being online. If we were face to face during the lab, I don't sit up front and grade other labs or read a book. I walk around making sure the students are doing the labs correctly and safely, and also I get to talk to you, get to know you, which we can't do right now, but later on the semester we'll be experimenting with breakout rooms and we'll see how that works. Now, with that, I'm gonna stick around a little longer. Uh, and in real life, if we had been in the and COD for the safety lab, this is about time or about 10 minutes, I'd let you lose too. So with that, if you don't have any questions, you can run away or walk away. And I'll say goodbye, gang gazun. I'll see you on Monday. If you have any questions, I'll stick around for a little while now. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. Don't forget to hand in the lab next Friday, by next Friday. And with that, 